You ever heard of Sonic? Well, I have some bad news for you, Sonic fans. Sonic is cool. But he's not the coolest. Aww. But chin up, little guy. I'm going to show you who is. You might be thinking, oh, he's going to say Mario, Crash Bandicoot. No, 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 no. You ever heard of Tyler the Tasmanian Tiger? I bet not. But maybe you should have. It is the best 3D platformer in the world. And you might be thinking, oh, he's being ironic, snarky. It's probably awful. No, it's a masterpiece in every sense of the word. Now, there are three of them. Technically, there's four, but we don't talk about the fourth one. There's three of them. But right now, I'm only going to be focusing on the first one, because that's going to be your introduction. Now, objectively, as a Sonic fan, you will like this game if you like any 3D Sonic games, because it's better than all of them combined. That's a very bold statement. I know. Wow, he's selling out. He must be sponsored. Wrong! I am a passionate lover. Now, as you might know, the past few Sonic games have been a little rocky. Even the ones that are, like, really good are just, they're, they're good. They're not great. They're not amazing. They're, they're good. But man, you ever played a masterpiece before, kid? Now, I don't really know why nobody's talking about her playing this. Maybe it's just the smaller budget. But all the characters are really well designed. The level design is fantastic. The music, oh my god, the music. One, you've been listening to it this whole time. But here's another one. This is Two Up. That's a good track. Shipwrecks. Rex marks the spot. It's composed by George Stamatiadis. And it's so amazing. Oh! The level design is so cool. It starts out very linear, just showing you the ropes of the game, but then overall it opens up more with these expansive levels where you can go off and explore and do your own things and find collectibles and things you would never normally find. Like a good <laughs> the controls are just so tight and warm and nice. Every jump you do is precise. Every boomerang throw, you hit exactly what you want to hit. The amount of quality control is insanely high. Everything is so polished and cool. Even though the game came out in 2002, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's its low poly aesthetics hold up so well. The environments and level design are just so smart and guide you in such a cool direction. It lets you really explore for yourself. And when you find all these cool hidden things, it just makes you feel a good sense of accomplishment. They reward the players for going out of their way to try different things and go against the grain and go in places that you wouldn't even think of. But it's not necessary. If you just want to beat the level, get in and out, it's pretty easy to do so but it doesn't feel like a grind to get the collectibles. It feels very fun. It feels almost like an adventure. In a lot of collectathons, you really don't get any reward for collecting stuff. Maybe a different ending, but not much. While this, you get new ranks to unlock new parts of levels, new levels entirely, paths that you wouldn't think of before, maybe doing something in a certain way, like using a flame ring on a barrel will light up the area and help you find stuff. An x-ray ring to help you find secret things hidden in the sky that you can hit that are in every single level of the game. And when you hit it, you'll get collectible art, which is just a fun way to reward the player for going out of their way. The character design is very simple, but very charming. He's got a personality. He's not no silent protagonist. His design with his shorts is very simple, yet iconic, which is what's necessary for, I guess, a icon say? It sounds kind of obnoxious, though. But when you compare him to his contemporaries, he fits in right alongside them. What could have been easily the next Crash Bandicoot or Spyro or even Sonic. The developers who made it Chrome almost went out of business a couple years ago. In fact, they were so close. Thankfully, the remasters were able to get them on their feet enough to remaster two and three as well, but really start out with the first one. It is $15 on Steam, easily worth it. Play through an hour or so right before you have to refund it, and then sit down and think, did I fucking love this game? Was this a masterpiece? And if you don't think that, you can refund it. But I don't think you're going to want to refund this. Now, as a whole, the franchise kind of has a very similar path to, I would say, the Halo franchise, the trilogy. That's right, four and five don't exist. But unfortunately, Ty the Tasmanian Tiger has not had the reach yet. The comeback that makes the best one. Yeah, that's right, reach is the best one. Don't fucking at me. Now, I would say a perfect similarity to how this game plays with other 3D platformers would be this trailer that shows a hospital. You see the Bandicoot, a dragon. I, I've, I've never played a Spyro game. I don't, I, I don't know about that one. And then you see the, the, the blue bowler himself, and, and then you just see Ty coming in, and he just he destroyed them all. He's like, yeah. <laughs> and they're all scared of him. They, they fear him, as they should, because every one of their games is inferior. 
to tie the Tasmanian tiger. Now, I love Sonic, and so don't take this as like, oh my god, he hates Sonic. I love Sonic, but this game is just an actual 3D platform masterpiece. Let's be real. There are a bunch of great Sonic games, but there are no good Sonic 3D platformers. Now there's some like running games and some running levels in Adventure, but the 3D platforming levels are always the worst and they really don't have much platforming at all. None of them have any sort of Banjo-Kazooie type game. Crash Bandicoot, he just runs straight through the mainland games. And I, I, I think it might be comparable to Spyro, but like, like I said, I've never, I've never played a Spyro game. But the levels, the music, the gameplay, the progression, characters, oh my god, this is a game you do not want to miss out. Don't let the fact that it came out in 2002 intimidate you. It holds up 100%, and it is so much fun to play. Like most 3D platformers, though, I would recommend you play it with a controller. I guess you could play it with keyboard and mouse. I haven't tried it. It originally came out on PS2, GameCube, and original Xbox. I played it on PS2, and on the PC, I used the Xbox One gamepad, which it played beautifully on. Come on, bro. I know you got 15 bucks. Look at you. Look at yourself. You bought forces. <laughs> you, you bought forces. <laughs> Look at this guy. This guy bought forces with his own money. But yet he hasn't bought Tide the Tasmanian Tiger. What a loser! <laughs> Disgusting! I'm I'm not sponsored or paid or given anything free. I, I just legitimately love this game and I really do wish you guys would check it out because I think you guys would love it. Like if you like Sonic games, if you like Sonic Adventure or Sonic Adventure 2, it's way better than both of those games. Give this game a shot. That's all. Be sure to subscribe to The Sonic Show so we can get over 100k subs. Follow me on Twitter at JuckFaden, patreon.com slash JuckFaden. Post almost every day now. One dollar is gets you everything. Amazing value, honestly. I put a lot of effort into my work, and if you support it, that would help a lot. Thanks, baby. Hugs and kisses.